Hey everybody, so here we are. We're going to take a look at the other form of cell reproduction, meiosis, in this vodcast. And it's going to take us through not a one-step uh, replication process like in mitosis, but a two-cell division process. And it is super important because this allows for organisms to help maintain this very, very, very important word here, variation in their population. And we will be starting today with the idea of variation and really running with it through the remainder of the year. So this is a big one. And uh, let's jump right in. So to talk about it first, we've got to go through a little bit of the differences between sexual versus asexual reproduction and living things. So uh, this will give us sort of the idea why meiosis is such an important process. First off, asexual reproduction. Now we just looked at this with mitosis, which is a form of asexual reproduction. It's where you have a single parent, so in essence that first one parent cell, and it by itself produces the offspring. Okay, so we don't have any um, second parent contribution. The offsprings are clones, meaning they are genetically identical to their parent. And there's no variation or no difference uh, in their genetic makeup with the exception of the possibility of what uh, mutations bring. And we'll be coming back to that. So some types. Binary fission, uh, bacteria take this process. Uh, amoebas, paramecium, these are or this is, I should say, a way for organisms to reproduce very mitosis-like, usually single-celled organisms split to form this. We also have vegetative propagation. If you've ever take a, a leaf cutting from a plant, you place it in some water, it grows some roots, you can plant it, it becomes a whole brand new plant. It's an asexual uh, form of reproduction because you've got that single parent uh, donation really and you get a whole new plant but it's exactly genetically identical regeneration think of like a sea star when it loses its leg okay when a sea star loses its leg um, a whole new star will grow right off of that leg and in the same sense the other star will grow a new leg um, salamanders do this when they lose their tails um, so it's it's a form of creation now humans we're not so lucky we can't really do that very well and then there's parthenogenesis. This one, oh, how interesting is this one? This is one where in times of intense stress, um, meaning lack of males around uh, female offspring, or female organisms, will fertilize you know, their own egg and give birth um, instead of having a contribution from a male. Um, you know, frogs can do this. Some of the reptile, the amphibians, um, you know, are really good at the, you know, can do this. I shouldn't say really good at it, but they can do it. Um, and it's usually, again, very, very huge amount of signs of stress. Uh, this is what drove the reproduction in the, or the idea of reproduction in Jurassic Park. Um, if you ever read that book, I highly suggest it. It's pretty neat if you haven't. Um, so there are advantages. You can get huge numbers of individuals from this, lots of population, okay, and very energy um, efficient because you don't need to find a mate, there's no mating involved, so a lot less energy, and you conserve resources. You don't have to show off, you don't have to, you know, look pretty for a mate or whatever, um, and so it works pretty well. Drawback, though, genetic identical to the parent huge drawback okay which is why most organisms don't use this mode okay so there's your disadvantage right there okay and in areas where you have a potentially changing environment that's a big deal because if the environment changes in a way that makes it unsuitable to that population whoosh, population wiped out okay if they're all genetically identical if they're not some have more of a likelihood to survive maintaining and promoting the, the uh, population generation after generation. So here's a few examples, just to throw some out there. Um, here's binary fission. Uh, here we have a paramecium in the process of dividing um, and splitting. It's very much like mitosis. These are runners, these are strawberry plants, okay? So if you go and pick strawberries in the summer, that's how they reproduce too. You can create new plants just from running um, a single vine underneath. 
there's your sea star growing its new limbs from a lost arm. Oh, us. Can we do that? Wait till I show you the video. Just wait. And then we have something like uh, budding. Okay, and we'll get to that. Okay, and a few other things. So, just for now, a little parthenogenesis, okay, um, discussion there. So, sexual reproduction. Here we go. Meiosis is the initiation of sexual reproduction, okay? And this is the form of cell division where we are going to take the chromosome count and we're going to reduce it by half in order to form a gamete. These are my sex cells, okay? Generally, there are only two of them that exist. You have a sperm, you have an egg, okay? When you have the sex cells, we take one of the sex cells, we take another one of the sex cells, they fuse together to create a single zygote, which is fertilization, boom, new critter. Okay. Now, individuals, remember, we have pairs of chromosomes, homologous pairs of chromosomes, which means all of our genes come in pairs. Okay. So one member from every pair okay, is donated from each parent. So all of my pairs okay, that I have, one half of the pair came from mom, the other half of the pair came from my dad, okay? And that's why all of our chromosomes come in pairs because each parent is gonna contribute one half of that homologous pair. And that's why all of our genes come in pairs too, okay? And as we mentioned in class, these genes, while they're similar as homologous pairs in terms of the genes that they have, they might come in different forms. And here is another really key new term, alleles. That just means same gene different form that it might take. So when looking at my karyotype here, here's the karyotype, all of those homologous pairs. Notice how they stain. You can see the gene locations are very similar, um, all of that stuff going on, okay? So again, all of our genes come in pairs. Huge advantage, variation. This advantage way outweighs the energy expenditure, the resource expenditure, so for populations, the m most appreci <laughs> appreciated, but the, the most chosen way for reproduction is through sexual reproduction because it promotes variation in the offspring. We are not genetically identical to our parents. We are a mismatch of two individuals and their genetic um, contributions. So that makes us, while similar, a little bit different. Big deal. Big deal. But again, costly. Lots of energy. Got to find a mate. Yeah. All right. So how do we get there? Let's talk about the chromosomes in meiosis. First off, terminology. Welcome to your like new world of genetic language. <laughs> Be ready. Uh, first off, when we describe a cell, all of our body cells which we also call somatic cells, um, are known chromosomally as being diploid, okay? Di means two, okay? And so they're diploid, hence the variable 2n. This just allows me to talk about any critter. So the diploid count is 2n. That means for every chromosome, they come in sets of two pairs, right? Okay. That's why we have homologous pairs. Some, though, are different. We can have monoploid, you can have octoploid. Strawberries are octoploid, which means they don't just have two of every chromosome, they have eight of every chromosome. Figure that one, okay? And so we'll be using this term. The idea behind meiosis is to take a diploid cell, okay, and turn it haploid, okay? And what that means is I take one of every chromosome type and have that present in the cell. So meiosis is about taking a diploid cell and converting it into a haploid cell. One half the chromosome count. All right. Let's remind ourselves of a few things. DNA replicates during the S phase. This still happens in a cell that's going to go through meiosis. Instead of having one division, we're going to have two. Okay, So we're going to have a set a PMAT1 and a PMAT2, 
All right, there'll be two different sets of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So prophase one, same things happen as in mitosis. Chromosomes condense, they get visible, nuclear envelope disappears. Here's the difference though. My homologous pairs literally pair up. They join together. So instead of remaining separate, they're going to join together. So here's one homologous pair. Remember we talked about how they replicate, right? So they're in this sort of lovely little X thing going on here because they're all replicated. But the homologous pair also hangs out together too. So you get this sort of foursome, okay? That's right there. Now, when this happens and you have this tangled mess of four chromatids together, we have an event that's known as crossing over, okay? They're all tangled up and they're gonna literally switch pieces. You are gonna see this in action in the lab. And that is another promotion of variation. Okay, this not only allows us to kind of reshuffle the deck, but really, really make it unlikely that organisms will be born from parents that are genetically identical, you know, not counting twins. Okay, and so it's a big, big addition to the variation um, piece. So here's what I mean by crossing over. Here is my foursome that I was just talking about. Here's one chromosome, here's its homologous pair, okay? They hang out together attached at their centromere in what we call a tetrad, okay? Now crossing over, the non-sister chromatids wind up and will literally flip-flop segments so that what was part of that chromosome is now part of this one. And that will help reshuffle a little bit of the genetic options uh, for the offspring as well. Okay? And where, like I said, wait for the lab if you're, if you're like, what? Uh, because you're going to get to basically manipulate and mess around with this. So I think we're going to stop there for this evening. Uh, so we'll be getting into part two of meiosis. Feel free to move ahead if you'd like to onto part two. Otherwise, we will see you guys in class and have a great night. Take it easy.